Good morning. My name is Reverend Thomas Bowen, and I have the pleasure of leading the Mayor's Office of Religious Affairs. Let's get started. Inhale. Exhale. My mom was one of 16 children born in South Carolina and raised in Apex, North Carolina until she made that pilgrimage on the Great Migration to Ohio, what D.C. native Isabel Wilkerson calls the search for the warmth of other sons. Now why they continued from North Carolina to Ohio and did not stop in D.C., I do not know. <laughs> but I corrected that mistake in 1996. She was one of 16 when she got to Ohio my siblings and I, we formed a family that was seven of us in the entirety. My mom brought with her from North Carolina and South Carolina something she had learned from growing up in such a large family, and that is treat everyone equally, but do not treat everyone the same. Here in Washington, D.C., we try to treat 700,000 plus residents equally, but the season reminds us that we ought not treat everyone the same. For all of us, as Mayor Elliman tells us, grow up with unequal childhoods. We bring different experiences, and we don't know what the other is going through. Inhale. Exhale. So this season, one thing that we can do is be kind. Be kind to each other. The answer to that Abrahamic religious question, am I my sibling's keeper, is yes. Because who are we? We are Washington, D.C. Today, it is our hope that each and every one receive resources that can help not only ourselves, but our neighbors, our friends, and our coworkers. That they can lean upon us in a time of need, and we'll be with them to give them the strength they need to make it through the day. Be kind. What a wonderful gift. And to those who perhaps are carrying more than the next person, remember to be kind to yourself. Being kind to yourself is not something that is selfish. It is an act of love. So this season, let us share the many resources and the help that we can provide our residents in need. Let us remember to be kind to one another. Let us remember to treat each and everyone equally, but do not treat them the same. Inhale, exhale. Shorter. Thank you so much for those uh, for just grounding us. I appreciate it. So welcome to uh, the Latin American Youth Center. It is so good to have you, Mayor Bowser. I know you've been very busy lately, um, and welcome to the uh, Chief of Police as well. I know he was around here, uh, Barbara Conti and Dr. Bazron. It's so great to see you in person. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, you know, as it was mentioned earlier, when we think of the holidays, we think of cheerful images and gatherings and celebrations and delicious food and gift exchanges and the mind is just running. But for others, however, these same images um, are, can be a source of sadness, anxiety, um, and depression. And for our most vulnerable, our children, our young people, we see this firsthand here at LAYC. For some of our children, the gathering of loved ones might feel incomplete. For some, because of a divorce, a deportation, or even a death of the family. We all know that the pandemic also took a toll in our communities. So in FY22, we provided 436 youth with mental health supports, uh, which is 75 more than FY21, indicating the increased need of mental health support. Especially in the case of children with uh, youth and unstable housing, financial and family circumstances, the holidays can be quite lonely and alienating. That's why those of us uh, in the position to care must open our arms in the broader community and ensure that everyone is cared for during this special time. So LAYC has been around for 50 years. Uh, we've offered comprehensive services and our mission has been to empower the young people and to help them achieve a successful transition to adulthood. Uh, but before anything, we want our young people to feel happy, strong, and connected. 
This means that our mental health services are crucial. We are a certified core service agency through the Department of Behavioral Health to provide bilingual and mental health rehabilitation services to youth. Uh, currently, Dr. Bastrom has been very gracious in supporting our efforts to become national accreditation, so we are very grateful for that. And because of our partnership and the additional funding we have been, that we receive, we have been able to support in mental health supports for 11 district public schools. We provide intensive case management to our clients, housing assistance, support to our LGBTQ youth through our STRIPES program, our public health, uh, AmeriCorps, which is our national uh, AmeriCorps that we just got awarded this year. We're very proud of these young people. We have three teams in Columbia Heights uh, and War Four supporting students, building their self-esteem. We employ school-based mental health counselors and support students in the school community to understand mental health. So some of you may not know, um, I was introduced to LAYC at the age of 14. Uh, I, I was a recipient of summer youth employment programs, many of the programs that our city offers. And LAYC was a safe haven to me. At that time, fast forward now, I would not realize what that would mean me as a, uh, shaping my adulthood or who I become or how, who I am and who I want to be in regards to serving my community. I had no idea. Um, so I, I know the importance of the support that's needed, that we cannot do this work without your support. And our staff is working uh, very uh, intentionally and even at this time during the holidays, not forgetting the needs that we're seeing. Through your support, Dr. Bastron, and, and the guidance that you've gotten, that we've, I've been in these meetings with you, we're able to see our teams provide guidance even during the holidays and letting our young people know that it is okay to be sad during the holidays. Uh, counselors are also providing food for the break, even though students aren't coming to school. We're, we know that that is part of uh, critical to mental health. We are, have clinicians supporting our young people around coping skills and grief surrounding the holidays. And, um, and we also have clinicians that are making themselves available during the holidays. So it is an honor uh, to be part of today's program. Uh, thank you again for your guidance. Um, it is encouraging to work with DC leadership who recognizes the challenges and burdens that our children, our young people in our communities face. I thank you, Mayor Bowser, for your leadership, support of LAYC youth and families, um, most important for you being able to have this critical conversation around in and encouraging our DC fellow uh, residents to care for one another, especially during the holidays. So next, um, you will hear from Nevaeh Bright, a 17-year-old Public Health America member, big time senior at Coolidge High School. All right, come up. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's great to be here with you all today. My name is Nevea Bright. I'm a proud DC native and a senior at Calvin Coolidge High School and a sophomore at Trinity Washington University. <laughs> I'm excited to have the opportunity to introduce someone who needs no introduction, Mayor Bowser. Um, as an LAYC Public Health AmeriCorps member, I am grateful to have Mayor Bowser supporting our, um, our efforts um, here at LAYC in raising the awareness around mental health. As a high school student, it means a lot to me personally to have you here today understanding and seeing our needs. I am more aware that counseling is needed and that we have to normalize seeking help. I, like Mayor Bowser, want to be a part of the solution. As an AmeriCorps member, I pledge to serve my community and help, help create a safe space for youth like myself so that they do not feel alone. Please, everyone, help me welcome Mayor Bowser. Well, good afternoon, or good morning. I will, whatever time, what time is it? Good morning. Uh, it's always great to be at LAYC. Did I get it? I'm terrible with acronyms. Latin American Youth Center. Let's hear it for the Latin American Youth Center. 
It has been a minute since I've been here, but I'm no stranger, uh, and I'm um, so happy to see such a warm and inviting space um, and warm and inviting people to welcome our young people um, from schools and homes uh, and sometimes from difficult situations to have a place where they can be safe. I want to thank Dr. Uh, Reverend Bowen for that beautiful introduction in the, morning, in the start of our program. <clears throat> and Dr. Bazron, uh, who is a wonderful leader in our behavioral health community, uh, who works with her colleagues across D.C. government uh, to make sure we're talking about mental health and all uh, that the government uh, can do to support families in our system. It's always good to see Sonora Simpson and be in her presence. So I want to thank you for your uh, leadership uh, as well. Uh, and uh, we know that trusted organizations like LAYC um, are, are so important to what the government is able to do. So I want to thank you, Ms. Contreras Grady, for your leadership here uh, and for all of the people who work here who are um, really mission focused, I know on um, helping young people thrive. And so as we approach the holiday season, um, we have been very focused on this um, every single day, uh, especially as we uh, come out of COVID, come out of isolation, get back to work, get back into our school rhythm, uh, connect to the people that we have been disconnected from, including our doctors, our mental health providers, our churches. Uh, it is so important uh, that we uh, reconnect to the social network that makes people feel good, that makes us healthy, um, but also acts as a warning system um, when things aren't right. Uh, and we are especially uh, concerned about that when it comes to our children. Uh, so all of the, the programs in the government, we want to uh, highlight. And I sometimes am discouraged because people won't know about some of the wonderful free programs that we have, like the CFSA uh, Family Success Centers that are managed in wards five, seven, and eight. I sometimes get concerned when people also don't know about the emergency help that's available, our crisis lifeline uh, that you can get by dialing the number you see here at triple eight seven we help um, that will allow you to access our hotline. Uh, Dr. Bazron has also been very focused on making sure that parents can get the help that they need in our Wellness Wednesday program. All service, services provided free of charge to residents of the District of Columbia. Uh, so I want to uh, first and foremost, as has already been mentioned, ask you if you're not feeling well, and, it, and that doesn't mean you have a diagnosis or it doesn't mean that you have been assigned a provider, if you're not feeling like yourself, uh, please reach out uh, and ask for help um, because we know we all want to be mentally strong to deal with a very tough world. Things aren't the easiest right now, and especially for our young people. I tell our teenagers of today, it's much harder being a teenager now than it was when I was a teenager, and it was pretty hard then. <laughs> But we didn't have um, some of the burdens that they have right now. So young people, we love you, we need you, and it is our job, the job of the adults, um, to make sure you have every single thing that you need. And I promise you that we have systems of care and support to give you all of those things. Uh, I also want to acknowledge our host council member, Brianna Godot. Uh, we'll give Brianna a big round of applause. And with that, invite Dr. Bazron up to uh, talk t um, specifically about our mental health programs. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Mayor Bowser, for your leadership and commitment for giving every resident an opportunity for a healthy life.
This is so important. Our vision at the Department of Behavioral Health, consistent with the mayor's vision, is a future where prevention and recovery from mental illness and or substance use disorders is possible. And every individual can have an opportunity to live to their highest potential and thrive. Mental illness and or addiction should not limit the potential of anyone to pursue their dreams, nor should it be a predictor of uncontrolled physical illness or early death. I also want to take this opportunity to thank Lupe Quinteros Grady. We have had a wonderful partnership with Latin American youth for many, many years, and we value the work that you and your team do for district residents every single day. So thank you for that. <laughs> the pandemic, however, affect, affects all of us and has affected all of us. We are still recovering, and many of us are suffering unimaginable loss of family and friends. The holiday season can be especially difficult as we mourn the loss of loved ones and face a holiday that's unlike any that we've ever experienced before. The Department of Behavioral Health offers behavioral health treatment and recovery supports through 84 certified community-based providers located all across the District of uh, Columbia. Self-care can also help to support wellness for all of us and for people who are in treatment Self-care can support their recovery. Self-care means taking the time to do things that help you live well and improve both your physical health and your mental health. And remember, mental health is a critical part of physical health. Self-care can help you manage stress, boost your mood, and lower your risk of illness. Even small acts of self-care in your daily life can have a big impact. Self-care, however, looks different for everyone, and it is important to find what you need and enjoy. It may take trial and error to discover what works best for you. I want to, however, give you a few ideas of what you might do during this holiday season. Get regular exercise, just 30 minutes of walking every day can make a big difference, just 30 minutes. Eat healthy, regular meals, and stay hydrated. We're all in the holiday season, all of those treats are out there, so let's remember to eat healthy and to make sure we hydrate. Water is really important, and it does affect your overall well-being. Make sleep a priority. Those of you who are gonna be up putting together toys and gifts, Make sure that you get the sleep that you need and that you skip to, stick to a schedule during this season. Try a relaxing uh, activity. Uh, the, uh, the minister that was up first told, talk, gave us some relaxation tips. Take in that deep breath. Breathe out. That helps us. Meditation and other kinds of relaxation activities also have a calming effect. Set goals and priorities. Learn to say no, hard for most of us, if you start to feel like you're taking on too much. Try to be mindful of what you have accomplished at the end of each day, and really push back on those things that you haven't been able to do. Celebrate your successes. Practice gratitude. Remind yourself daily of things you are grateful for. Be specific. Think about it at the end of the day. And really congratulate yourself on what you are really grat grat uh, grateful for. Focus on po positivity, identify and challenge these negative thoughts. And most of all, one of the things that I feel is most important is for you to stay connected. Reach out to your friends or family members who can provide emotional support and practical help. And last of all, find joy during the holiday season. Self-care is not a cure for mental illness, but understanding what causes or triggers your mild symptoms and what coping techniques work for you can help to manage your mental health. 
like with physical illnesses, there are times when professional help is needed to address your mental well-being. Remember, you're not alone. We're here to help you. You can get support by calling 988. When you call 988, a trained crisis counselor will answer the phone, will listen to understand how the problem is affecting you, provide support, and share resources as needed. If necessary, our community response team can come to your home, can come wherever you are in the community and provide you with the support you need in person. Almost 98% of people who contact our 988 lifeline get the crisis support they need and do not require additional services in that moment. The lifeline provides live crisis center phone services in both English and in Espanol and uses language line solutions to provide translation services in over 250 additional languages for the people who call. The lifeline can also support people who are hard of hearing or those who are deaf. Through the support provided by our mayor, we're expanding our crisis services so we can provide support whenever it is needed. We are hiring and looking for people who are passionate about helping others. We are seeking social workers, psychologists, psychiatrists, and peers with lived experience and others who have relevant experience. DC government has great benefits and great opportunities, not just to do good for the community, but to advance you in your own personal growth and development. Applying is very easy. I encourage you to go to together.dc.gov and look for the Department of Behavioral Health. We have jobs posted there, and we hope to have you join as a member of our team. Remember, during this stressful time, you are not alone. Help is available by simply calling 988. Have a safe and joyful holiday season, and thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bazron, and let me now invite the Ward 1 Council Member, Brianne Nadeau. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here at LAYC in the heart of Ward 1. Thank you, Lupi, for hosting us. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you, Dr. Bazron. Um, some of you may be old enough to remember the time before 911 existed. You don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> but you may recall during that transition, it took us a little while to learn, but what a change it made for safety and accessibility to government services. And then 311 came around, and the same kind of change. And how, what a blessing it is to not have to remember seven to 10 digits when you're in crisis. So rolling out 988, um, is something that we all need to do together and work together to make sure folks know about this important resource. Um, Dr. Bazron spoke so beautifully about all of the efforts here in the District of Columbia to serve those in need. And um, we know that very well in Ward 1, um, the struggles that people are facing right now because we are the heart of the city. We are the melting pot of the city. And Columbia Heights itself is really what I think of as that, that beating heart of the District of Columbia, and we know we see every day people out there struggling. Um, so I want to thank Mayor Bowser and Dr. Bazron um, and our partners at District Bridges in particular for helping with the pilot that we've been doing this year to provide um, substance use disorder and behavioral health services to those on Columbia Heights Plaza specifically um, to help um, get so many, many people into treatment this year and to show that when we dedicate those resources and we give people that personal connection and help them see that someone cares about them, that they can make a change that helps their lives, that they can be healthy and they can be supported. Um, and, and as we go into this holiday season, those are the things that I'm gonna carry with me that as a community, we know we are good at this. We know how to lift people up when they're down 
and by working together, we can continue to do that. So thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, so with that, um, I can take a few questions. Yes. Mayor Bowser, so obviously mental health has never been more important than it is right now in this day and age. I want to ask you, um, do you have any concerns, though, when it comes to criminal activity that mental health might be used as a scapegoat? How do you separate the two? And as a big city mayor, how do you address mental health when, when it comes to adults, for example, the gentleman who had an episode where he, was, he shot at police and then he was climbing wires, that because he's an adult, he can leave a program and the doctors don't have to share that information with his family who's a support for him. How do you address that as a big city mayor? Okay, the first, you had a first part to your question. Give me that again. Criminal activity, are you concerned that mental health is being used as a scapegoat for some people committing criminal activity? How do you separate the two? Well, um, our, our job is to make sure if someone has committed a crime that the criminal justice system deals with them and judges and doctors will determine um, what their capacity is to, to stand trial. Uh, if they're not going to be held criminally responsible or go through um, the system, I, we encourage, of course, the judges to make sure that they, people are either directed to or referred to the appropriate services. Um, and that's true for adults, uh, and it is especially true uh, for children. Um, the second part of your question was how do our police handle people in crises? You know, as a big city mayor, how can the city really handle mental health when it comes to criminal activity, especially when the situation that happened you know, earlier this year, the gentleman who had a mental health crisis, because he was an adult, that he can move in and out of programs as an adult, that because of HIPAA laws, for example, mm -hmm. doctors won't communicate with his family, who is his support system, and they're saying they've been trying to get him help, help, and help, and they're not getting anywhere. Well, I can't talk to any um, specific case, and perhaps Dr. Bajran will, will answer this. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, first of all, I think that it's important to note in terms of um, when somebody presents and it looks like they have a mental health problem, our clinicians do have the ability to go on scene and to determine whether or not they meet the criteria for being a danger to self and others. If they do meet that criteria, then in fact they can be committed uh, and taken to a hospital to get the supports that they need. While they are there, they can have a thorough evaluation, and if they need a longer stay, then we can appeal to the courts to uh, make sure that they get the services and supports that they need. However, within the District of Columbia, we do have consumer choice. So if someone is not uh, a danger to self and others, they do have the authority to determine whether or not they want to receive that service. If they do, we give it to them quickly. That then, Mayor, um, do you agree with what Mayor Adams did in New York City where he gave first responders the ability to involuntarily commit those dealing with mental health? First responders have an, a, an ability here and probably everywhere to commit people when they meet certain criteria. I don't, I don't know the specifics about what's going on in New York. I'm the mayor of Washington, D.C. <laughs> Okay, Mark. Uh, yeah, for Dr. Basron, can you, you know, I think the narrative we hear a lot this time of year is that suicide goes up around the holidays. And I see you shaking your head. What, what can you tell us about the reality of that? Uh, well, the reality is in terms of all of the data that has been collected, um, that suicide does not go up during the holiday season. That is not the case. And so during the holiday season, we do encourage uh, all residents, just like I said earlier, to mind their mental health and to do those things that really um, uh, uh, bring them a joy and help them in terms of their overall functioning. And if they need support, they should call 988. 
Can I ask you about the 988 number? Because the data that your office has released shows that uh, prior to the pandemic, compared to, I think, last month, the number of calls to the suicide hotline, I think, have about tripled, if mm -hmm. not more than tripled. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that that large increase in, in the number of calls to that number? Well, first of all, I'm glad that if people need help, they're calling 988 so that they can get the help they need. That's the first thing. The second thing is we have done a lot of community education so that people know how to get the services and supports they need. And so in the past, they may not have wanted to rem remember a 10-digit number. 988 is very easy to remember, and people are using that number, and I am pleased with that. And I, have, I have one last question. If, if you have a friend or a loved one who you believe is not acting like they normally do, mm -hmm. and you believe that maybe they are struggling uh, with mental health issues, mm -hmm. what's the best way for a loved one or a friend or a colleague to approach that person? Uh, well, first of all, talk to them and find out what's bothering them. Find out if they are, uh, do have any plans to, to hurt themselves. That's step one. And if they do have plans to help themselves, then seek help, seek professional help. Yes. What's the largest battle or hurdle you have with getting youth to come to a place like this? Well, uh, while we want uh, young people to get and seek help that's needed, they can't always recognize what's going on. And also, sometimes if you've uh, undergone, and we've seen a lot of young people with different trauma, it's not easy to, to want that help. So we have to work at that pace. And so our approach is holistic in a way where you heard, as you heard me mention earlier, if a family needs food, we're not just going to be like, oh, you're needing mental health. We're going to address food. We're connecting with them and providing uh, a connection and a safe space that's not judgmental, uh, meeting them where they're at, and just really opening the door and hopefully uh, getting into a place where they can receive and want the help and do the work because getting counseling is work. It's work that you have to agree to do and to be part of that and to resolve those things. So it's not easy for young people. It's not easy for adults. It's definitely not easy for young people. So, so our approach is it's, it's holistic in how we look at helping a young person and, and their families. And if I, excuse me. And, and if I might, I, I, I'd like to really highlight some of the wonderful work that um, LAYC does in engaging young people because it's all about relationships too. And through the school-based behavioral health program where uh, they can also connect with young people so that they are there. They are that trusted adult. And so it is much easier for them then to uh, help the, the young person get the, and seek the, the services that they need. And so I think that that is just critically important. As you know, our mayor has really made it possible for us to have school-based behavioral health in every public and public charter school within the District of Columbia. That makes a difference. Got to go where kids are. Okay. Off topic, Mayor. Okay. Could you uh, brief us on the district's plans to prepare for the weather that we're going to be experiencing over the next couple of days? Uh, well, Mark, we've been watching it um, the last several days. Our district snow team is coordinating and will deploy accordingly. Uh, as we get a little bit um, closer to the event, we will, if it is indeed snow and it, it could change, um, get information out to the community. At this point, I haven't issued, or it doesn't appear that we're going to need a snow emergency, but if any of that changes, we'll get that information out um, so people know about parking. Uh, we want to ask people to mine the, the snow routes uh, so that our teams can get out and clear. And if you don't have to be out, um, don't be out uh, so that the, the snow team can get to work. But we'll get that out on all of our channels. How about just the possibility or the likelihood of ice on the frozen roads? If we don't get snow, we're definitely going to get rain and the temperatures are going to drop. It looks like we're going to have some icy roads. Right. They, um, there's, I believe right now, and 
I didn't get my latest just before I walked in, but the, our approach to ice is pre-treating the roads um, so that we don't get uh, the freeze that we would otherwise. Last question right here. Okay. Um, Mayor, your thoughts on the, sorry, just, um, your thoughts on Metro Center, uh, the shooting that happened. In the police report, it does not identify the FBI agent who was off duty in a civilian capacity at the time. Do you think it's, it's fair that that agent's not being named? Um, I haven't looked at that report. That's not our practice. Um, if there is a police involved shooting, we ad advise uh, the, the council's committee. So that must be a, another agency. Well, if you could follow up on that, it's, it's your police department that put out this report, which not only did not include the, off, the FBI agent's name, it redacted the serial number of his weapon, his address was given as FBI headquarters, and it also, and this is something I don't think I've ever seen, included the criminal history of the gentleman who was shot. And it just seems like they're painting a narrative favorable to the FBI agent in this police report. Well, Mark, I, I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, if there is some information that is that is outstanding that we have, then uh, I'm going to ask you to follow up with the chief. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Yeah, hi. Um, hi. I'm actually, I work at LAYC, and I'm a clinical supervisor in one of our uh, mental health programs. Um, thank you so much for being here and you bringing bet. attention to this. Um, so I, I'm so appreciative of the school-based mental health program that exists. Um, I think uh, one place that I see a gap is grant funding for people that don't have a clinician at their school or prefer to get um, clinical help outside of their school um, and or people that aren't at school. And so I was wondering if, what the city is planning to do or if there are any initiatives to increase funding um, outside funding of- Funding for clinicians? For, for yeah, for clinicians, for grant grant funding for clinicians that are outside of just the school-based programs. Okay. That, well, you understand. Okay. I, I, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, one of the things that you should be uh, probably uh, may know about is that as a part of our 1115 waiver, we are currently doing a significant rate study that will provide resources to support clinicians who are licensed within the district and can provide those services outside of the schools or in their office ba clinic based um, uh, facilities uh, or within a provider organization. We do expect that there will be a significant increase in that and so it's not grant funding necessarily, it's really claims-based funding uh, for the services you provide. In addition to that, we do at the Department of Behavioral Health offer a number of grants that support funding for behavioral health care services. Please uh, check our website uh, because we do publish them there uh, and, and look for those opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a very Merry Christmas.